A competition gun is a highly personal and highly individual choice, which is why I'm going to make fun of you for your choice of competition gun. In this video, we'll be talking about what your competition gun says about you. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and today we're going to be having a little bit of fun and I'm going to be throwing punches all around and making fun of absolutely everybody you see at the match. And I promise I never would judge you for your choice in competition gun openly anyway. So let's get started. We'll start with good old Glock, Austrian perfection. If you compete with a Glock, you don't have much of imagination. You think that simplicity and reliability are way more important than performance, which doesn't make sense considering pistol competitions are won by performance. But that never stopped you from patting yourself firmly on the back anyway. Should have got a Glock, bro. You eat porridge for breakfast literally every single day because it's simple and warriors have been eating breakfasts of porridge for centuries and you can't be bothered to figure out what a breakfast for an athlete would be. You just do what the warriors do. And that's an unfortunate breakfast choice because you only eat your meals with your hands because a fork is a mechanical device prone to failure and so you want to be simpler than that, which is why you use your hands. And your entire house is furnished with IKEA furniture because you think that IKEA design is the pinnacle of modern comfort and design sensibility. Despite the fact that it was made by like the Keebler elves and looks like it was built for a flat rate box and usually isn't comfortable, but hey, that's your thing. It's simple, it's reliable, it's rugged, right? And that brings us to the Smith & Wesson M&P. You desperately wanted a Glock, but you've convinced yourself and try to convince others that this is better than a Glock despite it basically being a Glock. In any conversation about triggers, you're very quick to talk about how amazing your Apex trigger is for your Smith & Wesson. Yet you refuse to acknowledge that the trigger in its stock form is totally deficient and not suitable for competition. But that's not a problem with the platform, it's just that Apex is that much better, right? You absolutely love going to mini golf courses and just squeezing the golf balls in your palm because it reminds you of the palm swell on your M&P. You own multiple pieces of clothing that say Smith & Wesson, and on Tuesdays you change it up by wearing one that just says M&P. And now we're going to talk about the CZ Shadow 2. If you compete with the CZ Shadow 2, you like to think that you're better than everyone else, despite having even less imagination than a Glock shooter. You're so proud of your Shadow 2 that upon buying the second one, you immediately post pictures of it in Facebook groups of the gun sitting on your crotch in your car. It's a bone stock gun on your crotch in a car. The internet needs no more pictures of that. Please stop. You insist that the CZ action is viable in this day and age, despite being roughly equivalent of like a Ruger Mark III to take apart, and the torsion spring snaps all the time and it's not particularly durable, but you'll tell everybody that they are rugged and durable and pass NATO testing despite this being a competition guns for competition use. You like to think of yourself as being on the front end of a trend, despite this trend having started way back in like 2009 when the SP01 shadows first hit the states, but you think in 2021 that you're still pretty cutting edge for using a Shadow 2 and not a Glock. And you'll tell everybody that the Shadow 2 has the nicest trigger that you can imagine despite it being the most expensive gun that you own. The trigger is really nice. And the single action is generally as creepy as Joe Biden at an eight-year-old birthday party. And then you'll immediately tell new Shadow 2 owners they need to go and spend $300 at CZ Custom or Cajun Gunworks to make the trigger just so much better. And that's going to bring us to the Sig Sauer P320 X5 Legion. You like to be thought of as classy, which is why you bought a striker-fired gun made in America from a German gunmaker brand that is known for making double-action pistols. You like to be thought of as having the sophistication of somebody who's from Europe but can still show up in their sweatpants to CCs. You love the fact that Sig Sauer pistols come with a Sig Sauer sticker, so much so that the entire back windshield of your vehicle is covered in them. You love how Sig is a prestigious and elite brand. Makes you feel like you've got good taste, despite it being the most popular brand in the most popular division. So literally everyone has one, but you're somehow prestigious and elite because you've got one. You're not exactly sure what tungsten infused polymer is other than it's heavy, it looks cool, it sounds cool, and it is in no way a crutch to compensate for bad technique. And you're such a forward thinker and cutting edge that you really enjoy being a beta tester, especially when you pay full price for the product and your own ammo to actually test it. But hey, it came with a sticker, right? Now we'll talk about the iron-sided 20 
2011 pistols. And there's really two types of guys in this group. There's the guy shooting 40 caliber major who have dad bods, crush gun grips, and desperately don't want to think of 40 Smith & Wesson as being basically the same as 38 Super Comp at this point. And the guys who are shooting 9mm to cross train for 3-gun. And they don't really care about how they finish at the USPSA match because they're a 3-gunner, although they cry in their trucks on the way home from the match as they finish in the bottom third of shooters. You insist that 2011s are totally reliable and yours isn't like all the other ones that everyone's heard about on the internet as you clean it at the safe table during lunch and you clean out the magazines if the wind even kicks up dust onto them onto your belt. You really appreciate how precise and how good a 2011 trigger is and then use the trigger control that only a stormtrooper could be proud of. You enjoy casually talking about how much things cost in conversation because in your mind, high price means high quality, which is why you paid full sticker price for your vehicle, higher quality. You're very helpful. You show up on the range and you help new shooters with their stage plan. You give them your stage plan. I'm gonna shoot half the targets, reload, then shoot the other half of the targets. That joke absolutely never gets old, ever. Ever. And your favorite band is BTO and you show up to the match screaming at the top of your lungs, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hey, dirt. You love to remind people that Limited at one point was the most popular division in USPSA and IPSC shooting. It's not anymore, but it used to be, and people need to know about that. And then we come to our open shooters with their Red Dot 2011s. You're basically the same as the 2011 Ironsight guys, except you're either smaller and lighter and can't handle recoil, or older and fatter and can't see your sights anymore. You love to remind people that open guns are the cutting edge of what a pistol can be, despite the fact they haven't really changed in the past 20 years, but they're still the cutting edge. You like to talk to new shooters and tell them that open is the one true division and it's like the F1 division of pistol racing, despite the fact that you don't watch F1 racing and still get beat by the carry optics guys at your match. You pay $9,000 for a pistol and then scratch in the dirt like a chicken looking for a 15 cent piece of brass. Or you shoot nine major and only paid like six grand for your gun, but you blow it up all the time because you still pick up your nine major shells and try to reload them and you just think that's what nine major does rather than buying once fired brass and just leaving it on the ground like a sensible person. And that's going to bring us to Tanfolio. There's a silent G in Tanfolio and that makes you really excited. You like to think that production is ultimately the best, most interesting division and you've got the best gun for it. Despite the fact nobody agrees with you and there's no one shooting production anymore, 10 rounds is generally viewed as not fun and your gun was put together by drunk Italians, but hey, you're convinced it's the best, right? You like to remind everybody that Tanfolio Folio has the best frames on the production style pistol. And if you spend four hours polishing and $300 in parts, you can make the trigger almost as good as a CZ Shadow 2. You routinely send household objects from around your house off to be hard chromed because you love hard chrome so much. You're obviously better than those people shooting CZs despite the fact you're shooting a CZ clone that is less reliable and takes a lot more effort to make work. And you never miss an opportunity to remind CZ shooters that CZ hasn't won a national title title in USPSA in this century. You didn't either, but there's this guy who shoots Tanfos and he's won a bunch of national titles in a division that nobody shoots anymore and increasingly nobody cares about. <laughs> so that's what I've got for you guys. Hopefully nobody got too upset about it. We're still friends, I promise. Sound off in the comments with your favorite gun guy jokes and we can move on to the next one. I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.